Okay, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make your Arduino into a piano keyboard of sorts. Um, I made it with five keys. I'll show you the uh, my actual um, setup at the end of the, at the end of the video. But first, I'm going to describe um, the coding and the the wiring here. So, if you had looked at my speaker tutorial, this is pretty similar to that. If you didn't, that's no big deal. You should be okay. Um, but I will say that you're going to need um, some sort of speaker. Um, I have, again, I have links. If you look in the description, I have links to where you can buy this um, hardware. Also, you'll want a touch sensor, uh, FRS, I think they're called. Uh, again, F, I'm sorry, FSR. Um, these are the, the touch sensors that are typically used with our Arduinos. Again, links to where you can purchase them on my website. So here's the setup. You have a, the speaker has a definite positive and negative. You want to make sure uh, that you give the positive a, a port here, a digital port, digital pin that's going to hook into the positive here. And then the negative is going to just go to your ground, right? So that's the speaker. When we want to sound, send some sound to it, we will do it via this pin. In this instance, we have pin eight, right? Now, the way the touch sensor works, you have two legs here. It shouldn't matter which one is which. You want to hook it up so that you're giving power to one leg. The other leg you're going to, so if you see this actually goes here and to the five volt. The left leg here, or the other leg, goes to two different things. Actually, it's going to go via this resistor to ground. There's a ground over here on the Arduino. And then you also have it going to an analog pin. right? And it's important that it, it does that all on, on the same side as the ground. And it's important that the analog pin be on this side of the resistor. So make sure you have your setup that way. Uh, I have five different touch sensors in my project. I only I am only showing two, but that's only because there's not really enough room here to, to do it in this fritzing diagram. However, you should add as many as you want. Uh, I think there's six analog pins, so you may be capped at that. This uh, is the same setup, though, as this one here. It goes to power, and then it goes to analog and then it will go to uh, ground. So just replicate that for as many as you want to add. So like I said, in my code here, I have five pins. I, on the Arduino, you see the, the analog pins are down here. It uh, starts at A0 and goes to A5, so that's six pin jab. I'm just using five. That's all the touch sensors that I had. And I actually gave them the, uh, in the code, I gave the name, the variable that I was going to use I named it after the tone that I'm going to produce. So this is going to be a, a G note, an F note, E note, D note, C note. Um, and I'll, I'll explain to you how that works in a second. So they are um, each hooked up to an analog pin, A0 through A4. And then, as I had said earlier, speaker is hooked up to digital pin 8. This FSR reading variable is what we're going to use to determine which pin has been uh, given, touch, has been touched, has been sent some type of pressure. This character array is really just just for you to know that it matches up with this tone here. So the, these tones, and this was straight off the Arduino website, these values here are, are what, when you use it with the tone method, is what produces this note. It's been determined. Someone did the research and looked it up. Um, so I'm just kind of standing on their shoulders. So a C is 1915, and a D is 1700, and so on. And so you just use that. So And I'll, I'll show you further down. So in the setup, you don't really need to do anything. All your variables are declared. This is in case you want to uh, view the serial monitor. 
and see what's being produced. I have this in here, and you know, I actually read it out down here where it gives you the reading which pin is, is being identified. Uh, that's up to you if you want to use that or not. So in the loop variable, I set the FSR reading to negative one, and I'll explain to you why in a second. The negative one will be overridden uh, de depending upon which pin is pressed. So, and I just made it if the pin is greater than 10, which is really just a small touch, um, that then will go into the if statement and give it, give the S FSR reading variable the associated tone. So, for instance, the G pin, if that one was pressed, then it will have a value greater than 10, and thus the FSR reading variable will be equal to 4. And if you look up here, remember arrays are 0 base, so it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And there's the G variable, and we're actually going to use it down here. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, it's going to be 1275 when we use it with the tone array, which is right here. So that's how that works. That's and the if, each of these if statements works just like that. If none are pressed, then we stay at negative one. And you'll see down here if if it's negative one or below, we just don't produce a tone. And so that's how that that works. Uh, the tone, and you can mess around with this. I have this at a thousand, which basically basically makes it so when you press a tone, it will linger for about a second. Now you'll notice that my delay is only a hundred. So if I press a second tone a half second later, it will override the first tone. And then it will last about a second unless another uh, sensor is pressed in before that second is up. So that's how that works. Hopefully that makes sense for you. Uh, let's look at a demonstration. So as you can see from um, the setup here, I have my touch sensors taped down so that they work more like a keyboard and I actually um, put the corresponding notes so that I would remember which is which um, on them there with some tape and, uh, and there's the setup that we looked at in the diagram and I have my uh, Uno there that is uh, all wired. So let me just show you then. So if I plug in, and this is actually, by the way, a pretty cool little device that you can get just about anywhere. Um, just a nine volt battery, but it has like a battery pack with an N. That's that barrel that goes into uh, the Arduino. So it's pretty nice um, for powering it on the move. So I'm going to and put that in and it's powered up now um, so I can you know kind of go wireless here in a way and uh, let's try it uh, if I knew a song I'd uh, play one for you but I really don't but it works out pretty cool I hope you like this uh, project. Subscribe and, and let me know if you have any questions.